Hello and welcome to Building Solid Foundations Radio. This is your host, Steve Matley. We're on KCAA 1050 AM, 102.3 FM, and 106.5 FM. We are also on Roku on the Building Solid Foundations channel, coming soon to Amazon Fire TV and Android. And we are also on YouTube on the Building Solid Foundations channel or your favorite podcast platform. Uh, today in the studio, we are talking with Dan Reddig. Dan Reddig is um, a person, he's a... He's a um, Associate of mine from San Diego Creative Investors Association, SDCIA. That is the oldest and largest real estate investor network in San Diego County. Established, uh, well, Dan will tell you when it's established. I know it has been around at least 30 years, if not longer. A little bit longer, yeah. A little bit longer than that. And um, I, I know him because we both serve on the board of that organization. Um, it's a nonprofit, and it is a great place if you are a real estate person that wants to kind of kick the tire, see what's going on, or if you're a savvy real estate person that needs more connections. We're going to get into more of that later. But right now, I want to talk to Dan about who he is and where he came from. So Dan, welcome to Building Solid Foundations. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. All right. So first of all, like we said, tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your background? Uh, well, I have always been interested in real estate. I started kind of looking at it when I was 19, when I was uh, had just moved to San Diego to serve in the Marine Corps. And uh wasn't quite sure what to do, and we'll get more into it later, but I was looking for someone to work with or help show me the ropes, and it didn't really work out. So um, I pursued uh, IT, and uh, okay. you know, on nights and weekends, I taught myself uh, computers and programming and uh, turned that into a little IT consulting company uh, after I left the service. Um, so I continued to try and invest and, and work on things and uh, lost sight of real estate for a while, uh, but not didn't lose the itch. Okay. Uh, so, so now why did you eventually choose real estate? What, what interests you? Oh, uh, boy. Um, I really like all the different ways that you can leverage a property or put a deal together. If I'm going to buy stocks, um, you know, I can generally speaking go and buy something on, you know, privately from a private company and all the risks associated with that. Uh, or I can go to one of the trading platforms and buy something on the market. Uh, with real estate, I have the flexibility to put together the terms in a contract. Um, that makes sense for the situation myself and potential partners are in, and then the tax benefits that come with it. Okay. And um, now my first interest in real estate came from being very young where I appreciated living in it. Um, that was just, right. the real estate's really shelter, right? I mean, it's, right. it's land, it's shelter, yeah. it's the basics, uh, it's just the earth, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's the planet we live on. And, and the first thing that humans did was figure out a way to build a shelter on the little plot of land they were standing on, right? Right, call it theirs. And call it theirs, that's right. And, and, and man is, um, despite uh, different philosophies that want to claim to the contrary, man has always been a fairly possessive creature. Absolutely. We, we like to have yep. the stuff that's ours, our little <laughs> neck of the woods, right, our, our territory. So, so real estate, I think, is a, is a fairly natural, a fairly natural thing. And then when you find out that you can actually make money on it and provide not just space for yourself, but space for others, space for others to live, space mm -hmm. for others to work, space for others to play, uh, recreation, fitness, uh, medical, places to worship, all that. It, you know, it's it's just one of the basics. Right. Yeah, it's so multidimensional. Uh, I, and that is one of the things that has become more interesting to me as I've gotten into it is providing service to others. You know, it's a good place to live. Having those tenants, it's it's another form of the partnership. Um, you know, I don't I don't view tenants as just paying rent, but they're they're in it with me, and so we got to take care of them and and vice versa. So I think that's a pretty critical component you're mentioning there. Right, and and and, and that's what landlords, uh, the people that own the property, they are providing one of the most basic necessities that humans need, which is a Absolutely. shelter, a place mm -hmm. to live. Or as George Carlin said, a place to put your stuff. There you go. Right. <laughs> that is what we do these days. That's what that's garages right. are for. That's what garages are for. <laughs> Closets. Everywhere we have space. Absolutely. And, and junk will expand to fill the space we have available. Never fails. That's right. Okay, so um, you are um, actively investing in real estate now? I'm actively investing. Okay. Yep. And what kind of projects do you do? Uh, so in the past, I've done uh, mostly out-of-state wholesaling, and uh, for anyone who's familiar with uh, lease options, I worked on that. Uh, also out-of-state, trying to target markets that were a little bit less uh, expanded than San Diego um, or any of the other kind of coastal cities, and um, they work. They're interesting, uh, but there's a lot of care and feeding to putting sure. those deals together, uh, and with uh, with the time I spend uh, in the IT career field, that was that was getting to be somewhat challenging. So I've changed tact a little bit um, and looking for people to partner with on long and short-term rentals. Okay, so let's, 
let's back it. You mentioned wholesaling. Yeah. Um, in case there's somebody out there who doesn't understand what that means, or think wholesaling is buying a bunch of goods and then selling them <laughs> to retailers, right? So, so what in real estate terms, what is wholesaling? Absolutely. Uh, so wholesaling is finding a property that uh, is distressed or has a uh, seller who needs to move that property more quickly. So I can purchase it at a better price. Uh, so the difference between buying something wholesale, you know, kind of at manufacturer's uh, price versus retail, where you pay the full price for providing the full service all the way on a finished product. So you're going to be able to acquire the property at a significant discount because you're solving somebody's immediate problem. Precisely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and so, I, you know, the reason I point that out is not only people think, well, yeah, but you're kind of shorting people because you're taking advantage of their situation. Well, no, because sometimes people truly have a need that needs to be met right away. And not everybody can come in and solve a problem right away. They have to go get qualified mm -hmm. and loans and the process, the escrow, they gotta sell their place first or whatever it is. Absolutely. And, and that's a long drawn out process that has a lot of ways it can go wrong. If you can show up and do a cash deal with someone and say, look, you need to move in two weeks and get your cash mm -hmm. in your hand mm -hmm. before you're allowed to move, but you've got to go, um, I, I can do that for you. And for providing that level of convenience and certainty, there's going to be um, th there's going to be a premium attached to that, right? And so, uh, remember, everything's a, everything's a balance of time, money, and quality, right? Yeah, yeah. And everything is. So if you want the sale really, really fast, you're probably going to offer a discount. We do that. Um, we will when we sell some of our projects. Most of the builders and developers we sell to. They would like us to stay in that deal until they've been able to record a final map on everything, which could add four to six months to the project. Mm -hmm. But we want to get our investors' money back out of there again so they can redeploy it somewhere else. They've already been in for a while. Right. And so we will offer a discount 10 to 15% if, you, if they'll close at the tentative instead of at the final. Um, and that's... Th that's is that, the, is that taking the same advantage thing, yeah. of us? No. That's them... That's them solving a problem for us on a time frame mm -hmm. so we can get our investors taken care of earlier rather than later, and they are then entitled to some compensation for that because right. we've inconvenienced them in order for them to, to not inconvenience us. And, and so when you say the wholesaling, that is part of the game. Is There are people that out there, um, you mentioned the word distressed. Distressed tends to you know, give visions of someone who's horribly behind and then whatever, that, that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's on. a lot of unfortunate circumstances. But but there's other things where people just have to relocate quickly. Absolutely. Uh, people have life changes mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason. They have to go somewhere for some reason. Uh, they just want to liquidate or they need the cash right now for something else. Uh, maybe they own other properties too, but they need to get rid of this one because they need that cash to mm -hmm. deploy into some other thing that they need more urgently or more importantly than that particular property. And oftentimes investors will actually offer a discount on a property they've got a deal they want to get into. So that's something that's right. I, I talk to. There's an opportunity somewhere. Absolutely. And so. that opportunity evaporates in about 30 days and they got to sell this place in 20 days mm -hmm. or they don't have that opportunity. Yep. That's yeah. Right. I, I call, you know, any uh, self-managing landlords to ask them if they're considering things like that, or they might have something coming up to see if we could work something out. That's right. Um, in some cases, maybe they own a dozen properties, and what they need to do is sell one of the properties off to create the funding to go do repairs and maintenance on the other properties to maintain those values. Um, and and there, a lot of times you can be a landlord and have um, on paper balance sheet look really good, but mm -hmm. you have a your cash poor. Right. Especially in markets like say California, where you have a very low cap rate. Uh, because acquiring land costs so much mm -hmm. versus what you can charge for rent. Yeah, half and the property generally. <laughs> so sometimes you may have to cash something out in order to invest in the remaining properties in order to protect that investment mm -hmm. that you have. And, and yep. so it's so so that's wholesaling. And then you mentioned lease options. Yes. So lease options are uh, this gets a little more complicated. Um, so uh, a lease option is fundamentally renting a property to someone uh, with the option to purchase it. In the future, for an agreed upon price now. So that's what they used to call uh, rent to own. It's a rent to own. That's right. That's right. And so um, I stay in the middle of those uh, to manage aspects of finding an appropriate tenant and managing that so that the seller doesn't need to. And that is another one of the services that I provide is handling the situation. So someone who doesn't necessarily want to sell a house uh, but can collect uh, some of the rent through the future um, and then eventually avoid some of the tax, tax implications consequently, uh, also knows that they've got uh, a buyer who's taking care of the house like it's their own because they want to 
have that deed in their name in the future. So they're a renter who is working on becoming the owner and they will take care of the houses if they're the homeowner. Absolutely. As opposed to a transient renter who may or may not take care of it as well. Right. right. Okay. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of advantages on both sides, but as I mentioned earlier that it's a little more involved and uh, keeping up with the, the details of it it requires you to be very, very, very organized. And that can help people that are struggling with that. The, the biggest problem people have jumping from renter to homeowner is that down payment. That down payment. That down yep. payment is a killer. And it's very difficult for people to save up, you know, nowadays, what, $150,000? It's a tremendous amount of money. Yeah. 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 My, you know, my, my time in the service got me a, a VA loan, and that made that a heck of a lot easier. The dollar I mean, down deal? <laughs> I, yeah. I can't imagine uh, how hard uh, it must be, especially now, now these years later, uh, to qualify. This is, right. this is and, a heck of a market. FHA is a 3%, but 3% mm -hmm. of a $800,000 house is still, still a, a lot of money. Of money. Mm -hmm. But if you got to come up with that traditional 20%, that is a lot of cash and very difficult for people to save up. Yes. So the rent to own deal or that lease option mm -hmm. provides an avenue that, that gives them not just some hope, but a, but a path. It gives them a definite path forward that if they can stay, if they stay on that path, they can eventually own that house. Yes, and yeah. and, and typically in, in a two to five year window while That's they're right. living in the house already, so it's it is theirs, it is home. That's right. And they're just working towards it, you know, while they build equity. It's it's a fantastic opportunity. Yeah, it's sort of yeah, they're they're doing installment payments for the down payment, mm -hmm. and then we'll do installment payments for the mortgage. Yep. We're gonna have to take a break. Um, this is Building Solid Foundations Radio. My guest is Dan Reddick. And we will be right back after this. Don't go anywhere. And we have a lot more to talk about, like strategies for real estate. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect. Helping success stories unfold every day. The toughest part in the lending process is patience. Like I tell all my clients, once you get those keys in hand, it'll all be worth it. Everything that they said they were gonna do, they did. I saved so much money working with First Lending Solutions. I love my new house. I couldn't be happier. So reach out to me at First Lending Solutions so I can help you get started. You can contact Dafina Miller with First Lending Solutions at 951-973-0123, DafinaMillerMortgage.com. I love how New School is able to help me greatly with my career because they actually have experience working in the field. The greatest thing about New School is the fact that there are so many different disciplines which allows you to really understand and get a good insight into different types of design. And I think it's that whole changing mindset of what design can really do for a city and this is kind of the place to be. This environment cultivates creative thinking. Hi, this is Steve Matley. As a construction professional, I know the importance of selecting the right contractor for the job. Power Solar employs only professional installers. Power Solar will provide a knowledgeable consultant to help analyze your current electric bill, identify site placement, and correct solar technology for your home. Contact kcaaproducer at gmail.com for a free financial savings proposal with no obligation or call 951 551 1350 and ask for Ken. Again, that's KCAA producer at gmail.com or 951 551 1350 and ask for Ken. Hello and welcome back to Building Solid Foundations Radio. I'm your host, Steve Matley. Today we are with Dan Reddick. Dan Reddick is the president of San Diego Creative Investors Association. He is an active real estate investor. We've been talking about a couple of the strategies that he has employed in real estate, uh, namely the um, wholesaling and the lease option or the rent to own strategy. And 
Dan, I'm assuming that even though you were interested in real estate, you didn't just decide one day, I'm interested, I'm just going to go do it. There has to be some skills. There has to be something that you brought Absolutely. to the party. So uh, what kind of skills does it take to do real estate? Um, well, a, a little bit about what I went through first. Um, I started trying to figure out how to analyze deals and fairly quickly realized I don't know what I'm talking about after calling a couple of realtors. So I started reading books and uh, looking for classes to go to. Um, kind of, There's got to be other people out there doing this that I can learn from or work with to kind of get it going. So now when, when, you, when you start looking up that, though, you find out that there's so many options. It can be overwhelming. Completely. And a lot of them conflict with each other. They do. And everyone will tell you that they can or can't make money in the same market that somebody else is doing fairly well and or losing money, depending on the scenario. So it's more uh, a matter of learning how to run a business and to execute the strategy that you've chosen effectively. Because to some degree, um, while there are some outliers, they generally all work. It's a, a matter of how how are you operating. And so that you said a key thing there, and and I have had many conversations, and I and I actually did some consulting back and and years ago with real estate people who a lot of time never understood whether they were real estate agents or whether they were real estate investors or whatever they were doing. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand that that isn't in and of itself as a business. Completely, they didn't yeah. Run it like a business. And, and like a business, it should have its own entity. And like a business, it should have a clear mission and purpose. And mm -hmm. like a business, it should have a vision of where it's going. And it should have right. a set of values. And it should have a strategic plan. And, and all these things that right. we don't think about. And like a business, it requires a CEO and a CFO and uh, IT and marketing and just all these different things. Yep. It becomes a real deal. It's, a, a, it's real. a lot of details to keep track of. And you wind up doing everything. You wear everything. all the hats. Yeah. So so what I used to do with real estate agents when I would uh, talk with them, I would draw an organization chart of a typical real estate company. And it had all the things, the finance, marketing, mm -hmm. IT, HR, payroll, blah, 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 stuff, right? All the stuff, right? right? Everything through legal. And then I'd put their name in every single box, <laughs> doing sales, right? So yeah, absolutely. Is this why you're so tired? <laughs> Maybe this is why you're you're getting burned out on this deal. Absolutely. And even if even if you have the skills and can do all that stuff, it's just a lot of stuff to keep straight, and you're going to make more mistakes. So it's and you can't and you can't do all those well. And so I'd always say, circle the box that you want to get rid of first. Mm -hmm. And the box they'd circle nine times out of ten was the accounting and finance equation. Oh yeah. Who wants to play their own CPA? You know. God bless the accountants that do that, but I love every I, one of them. I le I learned how to do that in school, and I was actually very good at accounting. But I also learned that if I did that for a living every day, I'd probably slip my wrist. It's not me, so I fully appreciate and admire the bookkeepers and accountants that I hire to do that for me. Yeah, me too. It's a critical part of my business, and it'll keep you out of jail. It does. Yeah, keeping track of the whole another version of rules and regulations is. Uh, and that at the detail level that they have to, it's, it's an incredible process. Right. So, so part of this is meaning that, that you can't just do it all by yourself. Is that what you're saying, Dan? That's pretty much it. You know, um, learning how to run the business is, it's, it's a whole thing unto itself. So trying to find some group of people or something that lends it there. I, you know, I read a lot of books. I started listening to podcasts. Now, now the books, do they approach it from the, you need to get a team or do the books kind of tell you this is what you can do and you can do it all by yourself? Uh, most of the books, at least that I've run across are teaching kind of a basic strategy. Okay. And so the, the part about running a business and having your own personal affairs in order so you can do it successfully are generally not mentioned. Right. They're talking about yeah. specific real estate mm -hmm. deal strategy. Mm -hmm. Or very often how easy it is, you know, the, the no money down, just do it today. It's easy. And while those strategies work and they are true, um, you still have to have your own affairs in order if you're going to be successful. And that's what I was getting at because because my experience in those books are they lead a person to believe that you, oh, you yes. can do this by yourself yeah. in your spare time. Take two days a week after work and a half a day on a Saturday mm -hmm. and you'll build yourself a huge real estate empire. Yeah. Uh, well, not exactly. Because, not exactly. Yeah, it, it takes not just you but a lot of other people and there's a lot of work and effort mm -hmm. And you need to obtain a, either obtain a lot of knowledge or find people that have knowledge willing to share. Absolutely. I, I've seen this play out a handful of times. I've, I've joined a couple of organizations over the years um, before I got settled where I'm at now. And uh, that was basically the real life version of the books. You know, hey, here's how we do it. You know, you can just copy this. Here you go. 
no big deal, business in a box. Um, but this is people who have owned restaurants and cell phone kiosks, um, air, you know, heating and air conditioning service companies and all kinds of things like that. And they have extensive business experience operating a business, um, understanding how to run a business in terms of just pure business, regardless of the industry you're in. You know, they've got their key performance indicators that they're tracking so that they understand you know, lead and lag indicators to whether they're going to make a buck or if this happens, they're probably not going to make a buck, next, you know, in the future and things like that. So they can understand where things are going and why. Uh, the advantage that they have with that experience, even if their other businesses barely broke even, is tremendous. So well, even if, you're, if they had a business that failed, you right. learn mm -hmm. the basics of business. Absolutely. One of the key skills that people coming in is, is do you know how to read a contract? That's a That's toughie. A huge That's deal. a big one. Yes. Yeah. And most people, they don't. <laughs> it's not exactly the kind of thing you want to curl up by the fire with a you know a nice cup of tea and you know no this thing. No, this is boring, tedious, horrible stuff with all this language that you may not mm -hmm. understand. And, but you've got to know every single word in there, and you have to yep. understand what it means and what's left out. The That's the right. un, the unsaid is I, at least I've found to be more painful than what's said. That's uh, right. You know, it's not understanding something, I usually still have some inkling as to what it could have meant. So I'm at least a little bit prepared, um, but what's not in there that can get you is that's hiding around the corner. That's right. And so, so I find those those are things that people that have done business understand mm -hmm. those basic things. Right. Uh, people that have some kind of now you came from IT. IT is a project based very much business. Mm -hmm. So you brought that to the table because real estate is a project based business, and and the difference between that. So you have the business is the ongoing. This is the entity that goes on every single day. And there has to be cash flow. We have to do accounting, and we have to file tax, all this kind of stuff. And then you have the project, the individual real estate investment. It has a finite start, mm -hmm. and even if you find a holding, there's a finite end somewhere in there. Yep, right? at some point, usually twenty-seven and a half years. That's right. There's a, there's <laughs> a list of resources that are tied to it, and a sequential list of tasks that must be performed mm -hmm. at different levels often overlapping and concurrent. That, that defines what a project is, which is different than the ongoing entity where you just do the same. It's just, just keep, keep on doing it, it over and over, yeah. Forever and ever and ever. And so bringing that in, that's a, an advantage you have that other people coming out of a non-project-based business may not know. Absolutely. And you know, having that familiarity really helped me out a lot. And how to turn that around then, all the things that you know a typical corporation provides when you're working for them, you have to start to backfill. And so I, it sounds easy to go out and get your health care and other things in order. And if you have some employees, how to pay them, whether you get some service through Intuit or Augusto or whatever. But uh, tying it together so it makes a buck, that's that's the trick at, at the end. Yeah, and, and when you're starting off, when you look at that list of all the things I got to do and saying, you know, I can do better if I get other people to do it. Now the problem is, but I have to pay those people mm -hmm. in order to do these things for me. Yep. But I haven't made the money yet on it because I have to do the work before I get to the point where it generates money. This is the conundrum people find themselves in. It's a little bit of a churn, absolutely. And I've, I've solved some of it. You know, As we mentioned earlier, though, with the hiring CPAs and accountants, that's super helpful and on a contract basis. So that right. gets that moving. Um, for but you the, have to do that before you made money on it. Yeah, yeah, there's a certain amount you have to bring to the table. That's right. And I, I've also hired... Um, virtual assistants to help me out with specific tasks, especially things that churn over and can be done consistently, since that's a lot easier to teach someone how to do and, and then repeat. And, uh, you know, they help out a ton. But again, I have to bring enough money to the table to, depending on the skill sets, to pay somebody 5 to $25 an hour, wherever they happen to reside in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've got to know where you're going and why and kind of what your trajectory is. Like, I need to make a couple bucks, you know, to the tune of whatever by this time, or I need to make a go, no go decision. Yeah. And so that means there's some planning that has to happen. Any Absolutely. business, when you start it off, has to have some planning. And part of that planning is <clears throat> I need to save enough money aside to capitalize what I need to do before that business starts generating some money. Yes. Yeah. Even and if you're doing a flip and you can flip something mm -hmm. over in 60 days. Well, it takes the money to get through that 60 days. Yeah, you're going to borrow a whole bunch of money or bring money partners to the table. And, you know, you still have to coordinate and work through that effort and spend, uh, you know, if you're not spending time, or excuse me, money, you're spending a lot of your time. And that, that's, right. that's got a, a big cost, too. And time's an issue, too, because generally when people start this, they're still working that W-2 job. Absolutely. And I encourage people to keep that W-2 mm -hmm. job as long as is practical while you build it up until you can replace that income. Mm -hmm. Because the main reason... I don't care if it's a real estate business or a restaurant or computer repair, I don't care what it is. 
the lack of available capital is what causes them to fail. Even if it's a good business that could succeed, yeah, they, they can run out just because something goes wrong. Yeah, mm -hmm. cash, cash flow is king. Um, profit is huge. You have to have the profit. But sometimes if you don't have the necessary cash flow, you can't get to the profit. Absolutely. And, and one of the one of the comparisons I talk to my students, I teach at college too, I want to talk to the students about when I compare them is, let's say you leave here and you have two job offers. And one job offer is, we'll pay you $45,000 a year salary plus benefits paid every two weeks. Uh -huh. The other job offer is, we'll pay you $100,000 a year, but you get paid at the end of each year. That would now, stress me out. <laughs> what, what's so doing is obviously the profit is in the $100,000 offer, but who can live for 12 months without seeing that paycheck? Mm -hmm. Yep. You can't. So you're going to take the lower amount because you need the cash flow. That's, yeah, especially at that point in life. So Cash yeah. flow is king. Mm -hmm. That's right. 100%. So we're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to start talking about developing the skills and um, expenses you may have to put out. We kind of alluded to that a little bit. And different resources that come from networking and building a community around you. That so this good. is Building Solid Foundations Radio. My host is Dan Reddick. We are talking real estate and getting started in that business on Building Solid Foundations Radio. We'll be right back after this. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. Fire Up Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. part in the lending process is patience. Like I tell all my clients, once you get those keys in hand, it'll all be worth it. Everything that they said they were going to do, they did. I saved so much money working with First Lending Solutions. I love my new house. I couldn't be happier. So reach out to me at First Lending Solutions so I can help you get started. You can contact Dafina Miller with First Lending Solutions at 951-973-0123, DafinaMillerMortgage.com. Hi, this is Steve Matley. As a construction professional, I know the importance of selecting the right contractor for the job. Power Solar employs only professional installers. Power Solar will provide a knowledgeable consultant to help analyze your current electric bill, identify site placement, and correct solar technology for your home. Contact kcaaproducer at gmail.com for a free financial savings proposal with no obligation or call 951 951- 551-1350 and ask for Ken. Again, that's kcaaproducer at gmail.com or 951-551-1350 and ask for Ken. Welcome back to Building Solid Foundations Radio. This is your host, Steve Matley. I'm in the studio today with Dan Reddig. We are talking about real estate investing and getting started in the business and Dan's journey. Uh, before the break, we were talking about skills that were necessary um, and some of the books and classes and seminars and those things that are out there and how uh, you get a lot of great information, but you also they also leave a lot of things out. Uh, we also talked about having some past experience in business is a big help as well. So, Dan, my experience has been the single biggest risk in real estate is a lack of knowledge. Absolutely. Information is mm -hmm. the key. So, so you go and you, you read some of the books. That's okay for basic strategy ideas and those things. But if you're going to do a specific real estate transaction... You're going to need a lot more information. You need information. a lot more, yeah. Where do you find this knowledge? You know, there's a lot of experts out there. And uh, so tracking them down is the thing. And I think most people are familiar with calling some contractors, getting get three bids is kind of the, the golden rule. Uh, compare them, ask questions, and, you know, choose the one that you like the most and that you can afford. Um, it's not that different in some respects. Uh, 
but you need a lot more people. It's not quite so simple as just pick one. So um, you have to build your network. You know, you're going to need, depending on your strategy, um, you know, the accountant CPA to help you run your business. You might need a realtor to help you find or sell deals. Uh, maybe if you're a wholesaler and you're looking for off-market properties, you'll need someone to help you track those down or run marketing or uh, maybe hire a company to send out postcards or make cold calls, things like that. So this is that organization chart we were it's, talking it's about. It's a with huge, the, yeah. The marketing and the funding, the accounting, the finance, all the different parts and pieces. Um, and each one, and I think that's an important uh, task for anybody to do, lay out what are the necessary skills and positions that need to be done? There's mm -hmm. going to be a title person. There's going to be an escrow person. There's going to be a lender. There's going to be possibly an investor. There's, there's all these different people. Um, and figure out where do they fit in the equation and then decide who do I go to for these things. Absolutely. And, and a critical piece of that is to know what you're good at or what you like doing. Uh, a lot of people get into it and say, sure, I can do this. You know, um, you know Carlton Sheets you know, at 2 a.m. on my TV said, I can do this, you know, no money down. And as true as that is, um, if you're not, you know, if you're going to go after that strategy, you need to say, okay, am I good at marketing? Can I write this mail piece? Can I answer the phone and take the time to really empathize and understand what someone needs to solve, yeah. you know, and, and be able to build a rapport and do business with them? Uh, you have to know if you can do that yeah. stuff. And sometimes you try and maybe you need to hire somebody out or well, choose a different you strategy. Mean, you mentioned mailing out a piece. Okay, that involves graphic design, mm -hmm. copywriting, mm -hmm. right? Copy is tough. Layout. Copy is tough. That's right. So all this stuff that we don't even think about. Right. Real estate, that's got nothing to do with graphic design and, you mm -hmm. know, the interactive media. Sure it does. A tremendous amount. You know, yeah. a, a good buddy of mine here in San Diego flips about 30 homes a year. And uh, that seems like a pretty big number to a lot of people. And um, he has... Our running joke basically is he's not in real estate, he's in marketing. That's because right. he spends all his time making sure that the phones are answered, that the mail piece went out, that they're following up with people who have called in, uh, or they're working with uh, the realtors that have brought them deals recently. And it's, it's a whole completely separate business from the real estate business uh, running right next to the flipping side. Well, I, I tell people in our business, um, our business is marketing, marketing, and marketing. There are three different things we have to market. One, we're marketing out there trying to find land. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, that's an acquisition issue, right? Yes. We don't think of that. We think of marketing for sales. You got to market to buy. You have to find the deal in the first place. Yep. I got to go. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, not, I'm not buying land ever that's listed. We're finding what's not listed. We have to find what works. And then, as you were mentioning, you know, um, through some of the... Um, we talked about wholesaling earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, same idea. We're going out trying to solve people's problems. Absolutely. And we solve problems with this uh, family trust that's had this land for four generations and nobody wants it anymore. Right. Um, they'd we rather can, monetize it yeah, and move the, on with their lives. Yeah, they keep paying taxes and paying some attorneys to run it. And they got to do weed abatement every year, but they don't want it. And it's just foul Just costing them money and taxes. Land. Yeah. Exactly. It's a mm -hmm. hassle, right? So they'd rather make money on it, right? Get, just liquidate it. And, it. and it started with a couple who passed it down, passed it down, passed it down. Now it's a group of disconnected cousins that own it, right? <laughs> and that's kind of what happens, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so we're, we're solving that problem. So that's marketing for land. Second, we're marketing for money. Mm. We got to bring investors to, in, get yeah, capital. Do the workups and yeah, get, get the capital and find the people that would like to put money into our deals. And then third, we're marketing when the product is done, who are we going to sell it to? Who's going to buy it? So, so there's three different marketing thrusts. We're marketing, in, marketing, and marketing. Yep. That's our that's our company. <laughs> that's the whole thing. Yeah, it's it turns out that's a really tough part of it, and that's just one aspect. You know, uh, if people who t who think they're going to go flip homes, generally speaking, don't realize it. Um, and especially you know the more competitive markets, um, which is almost everything these days, honestly, unless you're in fairly small towns. But uh, if you think that you're going to work with somebody who provides properties, a wholesaler by you know that term. Uh, they have so many people who are trying to buy their deals that they're top dollar. So, so if you, it's a bidding sort of, it's a, deal. a bidding deal. Yeah. So if you're going to try and be competitive there, you're going to have to have the other side of your business, the rehab side, um, all worked out, everything working perfectly so that you can work on very thin margins consistently. So you have to be able to evaluate the deal to know that you can make money on the way you do it and, and then execute successfully and on thin margins, uh, again, that takes experience, and yeah. when you're starting out, that's challenging. So now you got two really huge challenges that you've just tried to take on. Now, now that means if you're doing the rehab, that means you need to be an expert in construction estimating. Mm -hmm. Okay, so construction estimating, they'll usually add about a 10% 
error factor when yep. you're doing rebuilds and rehabs because once you open up a wall, God knows what's inside that thing, right? Oh, yeah. Who knows? And yet you're working on a margin. You said thin margins, 2 to 3%. Okay, right. so I'm a 2 to 3% percent mar uh, percent margin, and I've got a 10% margin of error. There's it's, a lot of room to lose money on that. There's a lot of room there, yeah. And you got to really know your stuff. And as I said before, the biggest risk is lack of knowledge. 100%. Yeah, and then, you know, even if you know that there could be this risk, do you know how much it costs? The construction estimating side of it is its own ball of wax entirely. Um, people think that there's a lot of big money to be made in flipping houses. And I... There was. There was. Um, you know, the... When the market was accelerating a lot. Yep. Yeah. And there was a lot of inventory hanging around mm -hmm. with people didn't know what to do with it. Right. And, you know, right now, um, you know, if I could make 6% on a flip in this market, I'd be pretty happy. So that would be pretty good right now. I'd be, be shocked if you could find a piece of property that you could acquire at a price that would allow that. They're around, but yeah. it's, a, it's a lot of digging. And a lot of people yeah. trying to find them. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll talk to, you know, one to 200 leads mm -hmm. to try and get uh, an offer that might make sense. Okay. So there's your time. In. It's a it huge takes time. amount of time. Yeah. So I, then, I spend a lot of time each week just chiseling through right. what's on the market. I've got off market um effort as well to try and reach people th uh, mostly through some postcards and some handwritten letters I do for properties I like the most. And um, it's just a matter of keep on keeping on because it takes so many tries to get something that makes sense for both of you. Yeah. And I would say what I mentioned was the model what we do is the same thing that you're doing. If you're doing a, a, a flip or a buy and hold or something, you're marketing to find the, the choir. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you're marketing to get the money to right. do it because yep. you're not doing this out of your savings account. No, 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 nope, no nope. savvy investor would. No, right? I definitely need private money. Private money, a mix. Usually, it's a mix of both equity and debt that mm -hmm. you're using on these things. Yeah. And then you're marketing either for a purchaser if you're flipping it over, or you're marketing for a renter if you're holding it. Right. So you're still it's it's a still the marketing same business. deal. Mm -hmm. And I say I find with real estate, no, we're in very different niches of the industry, very different. And so, but it's the same thing. Yet entirely different. Right. That's what yeah. all real estate is the same thing, and yet it comes in a lot of different flavors. Yeah, the details change pretty radically, but the yeah. process isn't too different. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've found um, I can transfer a fair amount of what I've done in the past to now as I'm working more on the uh, longer term holds, whether it's a short term rental or standard rental. Um, that stuff all translates. I just have to put a little bit different twist on it to make it work. Yeah. Okay, so we mentioned uh, knowledge, and then a lot of you mentioned getting the connections. You have to find people that can do these yeah. parts and pieces. Okay, so we don't have the yellow pages anymore. We do have Google. <laughs> uh, so do I randomly go out and start Googling to find these people? Do I go on offer up and Fiverr? What, what am I doing? Sometimes I think it depends a little bit on the role, but um, the most effective thing is to build your network. You know. Okay, so that's we we've read that, we've heard mm -hmm. that, but there's very little bit about how to actually do that. Yeah, you got to find a way to get in front of people. So there's organizations out there that make this a lot easier. Um, I've signed up for a few uh, mastermind kind of organizations or training kind of boot camp type things. Um, and they're fairly helpful. Uh, if you already have an established business or a lot of business experience, you can grab those things and run. Those are good for problem solving. They're, yeah, they're yeah. very, very good for problem solving yes. and, uh, and you know, kind of keeping motivation but up and whatnot. If you're not far enough in the process to have the problem solve, then it's a little bit Yeah, it's just, yeah. you just have it's nothing just but problems. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, there's a lot of different organizations that can help. You can find some stuff on Meetup and whatnot. Um, the most common thing that you'll find across the country is these real estate investor associations. So we call them RIAs. Okay. And so uh, I happen to be the president of SDCIA, the San Diego Creative Investors Association, uh, which is one such organization. And that's really what made the difference for me. It allowed me to start to see how things go to work alongside other people and have the experts in the room that I could say, okay, this happened, what do I do? And they'd be happy to answer a couple questions for me and give me some homework. And uh, then I could go and take another swing at it and come back with something. And maybe it's a deal, maybe it's not. But I started to really be able to see my way through all of the details to the end. Okay. So you, so what you did, you found the club. I did. There's a club of people that hang out and they all do something related to investing in real estate, mm -hmm. whether they are investors or they provide services to the investors, their title, their escrow, their, um, their lenders, got lenders, yep. their whatever, there's, there's yeah, their their, their their, contractors, yep, mm -hmm. their home inspectors, mm -hmm. they're all the different people out there. Because as you mentioned, there's a lot of things that need to get done, yes. even mobile notary services and those kind of things that you need to sign documents. So 
you find a club of people that are either like-minded investors and or resources for those investors. And now you start being able to go through that little organization chart that's overwhelming and start plugging holes in. Yes. Okay, so I want to get more into this whole deal about SDCIA and other similar clubs. We're going to have to take another short break. We're going to get into that in our final segment. I'm talking with Dan Reddig. Uh, he's the president of SDCIA, and we're talking all things getting started in real estate. Uh, I'm Steve Matley on Building Solid Foundations Radio. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. Fire Up Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing, and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. The toughest part in the lending process is patience. Like I tell all my clients, once you get those keys in hand, it'll all be worth it. Everything that they said they were gonna do, they did. I saved so much money working with First Lending Solutions. I love my new house. I couldn't be happier. So reach out to me at First Lending Solutions so I can help you get started. You can contact Dafina Miller with First Lending Solutions at 951-973-0123, DafinaMillerMortgage.com. Hi, this is Steve Matley. As a construction professional, I know the importance of selecting the right contractor for the job. Power Solar employs only professional installers. Power Solar will provide a knowledgeable consultant to help analyze your current electric bill, identify site placement, and correct solar technology for your home. Contact KCAA producer at gmail.com for a free financial savings proposal with no obligation or call 951 951- 551-1350 and ask for Ken. Again, that's KCAA producer at gmail.com or 951-551-1350 and ask for Ken. Hi, welcome back to Building Solid Foundations. This is Steve Matley, your host. We're talking to Dan Reddick. Dan Reddick is the president of SDCIA. And then before the break, we were just talking about getting into the, the topic of what is an REI and why are they important. Um, Dan mentioned that they were very integral to him making the jump from thinking it and wanting to do it to actually finding the right people and the right connections and and filling that knowledge gap. Uh, so Dan, um, you mentioned, uh, you d- obviously didn't go to one of these groups and become the president the first no. day. Or, so this is a long journey. <laughs> it's been a long journey. So, so kind of walk us through what that's like going in as a complete newbie. Um, is this a, you know, they welcome you or is it um, look at the new freshman coming in the door and don't talk to them sort of thing? How does this work? Well, uh, so I got into, I basically had a life changing moment in 2013 and uh, decided to get back into the real estate game. Time freedom's really what I'm after. And uh, so I happened to come across SDCIA and went to a meeting. Um, they've got a ton of people coming to the meetings. Um, there was well over 150, 160 people in attendance, um, far more than I expected, completely uh, surprised me. Mm-hmm. And just standing in line uh, to register, um, people are talking about what they're doing, they're asking questions. Uh, it was it was a welcoming environment to where we, you know you just find out that there's this whole group of people who are interested in the same thing you are and just as excited. That's right. And, and it's been my experience, and I've been to multiple REIs out there, and I've never once come across the one that had the Insiders Club, ever. No, I, no. It's, it's always been very open. Absolutely. And, and they don't view you as a competitor coming in. They they, they view you as, as another person that's crazy enough to do the kind of thing they're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, entrepreneurs are just the kind of their own thing. And right. so to, to find your tribe is a really powerful thing. That's right. So that was maybe the the only challenge that I really had getting into it was you just have to muster the courage to go and talk to somebody you don't know. So I think that's kind of common to whatever you're doing. So I 
just started asking people, what are you working on? That's right. And made my way around the room, got a couple names, and just tried to find those people at the next meeting and uh, build up you know, a couple people that seemed to get along with. Yeah, and I found that when I go around the room, uh, you, you you can't look at people and guess where they are. Not in the for a journey. second. Not at all. Some people you walk up and you think, well, this person must be the most savvy person around. And mm -hmm. you walk up, well, they just came from their job somewhere from the mm -hmm. office. Yep. And so they look, you know, all put together. And you talk to them, and they say, you know, I'm I'm just checking things. I'm just getting started. I don't mm -hmm. even know where to start. Mm -hmm. And then you walk talk to someone else, who looks like. Potentially, they slept in their car last night, and, and you find out they own a $10 million portfolio yep. of real estate all over the place. And the reason they look like that is they were out working on a couple of places today, yeah. and they didn't have time to go home and shower before the meeting. Right. I mean, never underestimate the battered flip-flops and tattered Hawaiian shirt. That's for sure. <laughs> that You'll get surprised every turn. And a lot of people also undersell, undersell themselves. You know, they say, oh, I'm just trying to get this figured out, and you find out they've got a dozen rentals. And you're like, wow, well, that seems like a business to me. But in their mind, they but may it, still be trying to figure it out because mm -hmm. they're, they're looking at other people that have been doing Absolutely. this much longer and have a much bigger portfolio. And the more you learn, the more questions you have. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And you also find out that no matter how long people have been in this business, there's things they don't know. Absolutely. Yep. I, I've always said that the, um, the most savvy and experienced investor has about a thimble full of knowledge mm -hmm. in a infinite ocean of available information. Yeah. Oh, well, that's what makes the network so incredibly valuable. That's you know what we do with SDCIA and have bringing everybody together with these common interests and all their various experiences, you know even somebody who is not, um, you know say a real estate attorney may have been through a lawsuit or has just done a lot of contract work and you can talk to them about what you're going through or what you're trying to achieve and how to protect your interests. Right. It's uh, they'll give lots of ideas and you still need to go work with your attorney to narrow it down as to how it's going to be on paper, right. um, but the creative part. And you know the idea of finding and the, the amazing conversations that result, uh, that's the way to do it is come to some kind of a networking group. Right. And, and I find that um, sometimes the people in there, they have experience but not successful experience. Mm -hmm. They're still trying to figure it out. And yep. you can learn a lot from other people uh, that are talking about the things they did wrong. The things that were mistakes, the things that they they'll never do again. Oh yeah, and and that means that's that's a very necessary part of their journey. And I don't mean to scare people off from doing this, but the fact is, if you're gonna if you're gonna get in this game, you have to expect not everything's gonna mm -hmm. go according to plan. Sometimes chances are you'll lose money in real estate at some point. At some point, you probably and will. You probably will at some point, and so that's why you always got to be cautious to make sure you've done everything you can to uh, mitigate your risk by getting the right people, doing the research, and not putting every dime you own into a particular deal. Oh, no. Put yeah. the money up that you can afford to lose if it goes south. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's a whole, that's part of that strategy. That's part of that, that strategy. And as you go forward, you'll have more and more that you can put out there. You also learn that if you don't put your money at risk, let's see, if I don't put my money at risk. You don't um, get anything back. Anything back. Yeah, <laughs> I have people talk to me when I talk about investing and they say, well, are there, what's the guarantee? Mm. So well, the guarantee is there's no guarantees. That's absolutely. my guarantee. Yeah, uh, that's number one. Number mm -hmm. two, if you're looking for the investment that is absolutely guaranteed, I know where you can find it. Yeah, it's a bond. <laughs> yeah, you can bond or you go to the bank and buy a T-bill. Yeah, It's yeah. guaranteed by the U.S. government up to 200 something thousand dollars, but I believe it's paying out at something that rounds 0 .01. up to zero, right? Yeah, <laughs> just about, yeah. 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 yeah, and that's, so So you can do that while inflation is eating you alive at, you know, real inflation is somewhere around 12 to 15% right now. It's pretty high. Not CPI, mm -hmm. but real inflation. Mm -hmm. That's that's a huge risk. You got to put your money somewhere doing something. So yeah, you're gonna have to take some risk. Money is designed to be put to use. It's where it's most effective. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a seed. You plant it, yep. it grows. And if you just sit it on the counter, let dry out, it dries out. Yep. I mean, my very first flip that I did back in 2017, um, I over improved, and that yeah. gave me a lesson where I you know I ended up losing some money on it, and that gave me something to talk to people about, and really made those conversations more effective. I knew what to ask. That's and right. people understood that I had done something, and so they knew what to tell me based on my experience and my skill level. That's right. And uh, that is what really opened it up. That's when all of a sudden I got it, and I really got super interested uh, in participating uh, at however I could in uh, in this organization. And eventually became the president of it. Eventually, and, yep. And what you find is you can't go once and expect all your problems to be solved. You have to go again and again and again and be mm -hmm. a regular person. People will do business with who they know, like, like and, and trust. trust. Yes. And that takes time. You build the relationship, and it's invaluable. Um, SDCIA.com is the website for the San Diego Creative Investors Association. SDCIA.com. 
visitors are always welcome. Uh, we're running out of time here, Dan. So uh, we have a great conversation. I, could, I think we could go on for another hour we could do here. another whole segment. But <laughs> we got to wrap it up. Then we're going to run out of time here. So this is Building Solid Foundations on KCAA. My guest today has been Dan Reddig. He's president of SDCIA. Again, go to sdcia.com if you're interested in finding out about that or other associations related to real estate. Uh, I'm Steve Matley. This is Building Solid Foundations Radio. We will see you next week. And until then, have a fantastic week and try something new this week. Thanks for having me. Steve. Miss your favorite show? Download the podcast at kcaaradio.com. NBC News Radio, I'm Lisa Taylor. The United Auto Workers Union will strike against Detroit's big